Hey everybody, Colin Sage. Today here at First Build, we're gonna make a couple spoons. We got Andrea, she's a guest at First Build, and she's gonna teach me what the heck's going on inside that spoon. Hi, I'm Andrea, and I'm a metallurgist by degree. I'm here to learn some blacksmithing from Colin, and maybe teach him some metallurgy along the way. There it goes. I assume you're right-handed. Hammer hand, tong hand. Tong hand. You're always gonna want a glove, because you're gonna be reaching in towards the flames. Today, at First Build, I got the old spoon fingers. Today, at First Build, we're making a spoon. A spoon. Out of this. Out of that. It's just mild carbon steel. Let's do it. Probably gonna drop things. Right. Two equal pieces, one's mine, one's yours. Let's go ahead and throw them in the forge. There's a couple things to note when you're about to get in there and grab this steel. When you're grabbing, and especially while you're hammering, keep a nice tight grip. Not so much that you're gonna fatigue yourself. Misconception is to swing the hammer as hard as you possibly can that's gonna lead to mistakes. You wanna be accurate and you wanna be intentional about each swing and each hit. Ready? Go for it. Yep, you're watching where each blow comes down, you're seeing the deformation. I make cool stuff all the time, swords and shields and knives. Now, Andrea's a metallurgist. What makes metallurgy so cool? Metallurgy is pretty cool because what's going on at the atomic level and then at the microstructural level, it's actually really beautiful. You can take a microscope and look at the different structures and manipulate that with what kind of heat treatment you're gonna put it under, or what kind of quenching practice you're gonna use. And you can really do a lot to change what that looks like. So the power's really in your hands. You're gonna cause deformation in different areas of where you're hitting. And so to even it out, usually the best way is just to flip it over and hit it again and you'll change your sides because right-handed, coming at a little bit of an angle, it's not perfect every time. You're not perfect, I'm not perfect. We can get pretty close to it. All right, Andrea, you're the expert. <laughs> Why is this glowing? What, what magic is this that makes steel glow when it gets hot? Well, as the electrons, the charged particle, move and shake, they emit those electromagnetic waves that you see in your eye as light. Up over 800, 900 degrees, that's when things start glowing. Our pieces in there are getting super hot and the bright part of the steel is getting brighter, brighter, brighter. Is that gonna cause any problems? We just need to make sure that we're not gonna melt our steel. Your natural gas burners can get well over 3,000 degrees. And so we just need to make sure when the part, as the forge gets heated up, we're not melting our steel. Okay. You'll notice the pieces of bar stock we're using aren't very thick. They don't have a lot of mass to them. So our spoon head here is not gonna get real big, but we're gonna try to thin it down as best we can. We're gonna keep rotating and flipping and try to get it evenly compressed and the size of the material will just kind of dictate how much cereal we actually get in our mouth. You're up. As you swing your hammer down and as you hit the piece, it's going to deform and the material is going to push out in all directions from where the hammer hits, but you can influence where things are going with a little bit of movement in that direction so I can help the piece along if I want it to expand more outward then inward, I can give it a little bit of a outward movement as I'm coming down onto the piece. So notice, especially on small pieces like this, you want more control. You don't need to be out here bringing your fulcrum way back here. And so you're gonna wanna choke up on your hammer. You don't need to pull from way up here. You can just keep it down, especially when your piece gets really thin. And you wanna think about where it's going and what you're trying to create instead of how hard you can hit it. Don't let your piece melt. Nope, don't let it melt. All it makes it look really easy. It looks like it's a muscular activity, but it's actually way more precise than that. I'm kind of a large guy, and yes, that's helpful, but anybody can be a blacksmith, because it's not about power. It's really about muscular endurance, fatigue, and dexterity. It's not the spoon that bends, it's me, all right? I watch The Matrix. so. Andrea, as you can see on my spoon here, we got some black, crusty stuff that keeps flaking off our material. What the heck is that? Yeah, so that's iron oxide. It's formed in the furnace in an oxidizing environment. It sticks to the surface, and then when you knock it off when you hit it with a hammer. So as the material heats up, does that help it react with oxygen more quickly? Yeah, it's more of a driving force for that reaction to take place. Science! As I'm hitting the steel here, it's moving out of the way. What exactly is happening and why do we have to heat it up in order to do that? Yeah, steel's really nice to work with at high temperatures. It takes on a crystal shape that's really favorable for that, applying that deformation. 
We know that there's atoms in the steel. To change the shape of the metal, you have to get those to move past each other. It's not just moving one atom, tenth of a millimeter. You're moving a lot of atoms in that direction. At higher temperatures, you know, the steel, it expands, mm -hmm. and that makes it a little bit easier to put those deformations into it. It almost looks Pretty like much. a spoon. Yeah. got it down. She's a natural. Woo! What we're going to do is we're going to put that in. We're going to straighten out the handle, some light taps, and then you'll put your little decorative bends in it. Ah. Uh, your ergonomics. My ergonomics? Yeah, your ergonomics. <laughs> Here, try, try these. Squeeze as hard as you can. Nope. If you pull back like this, oh, it'll open. it opens up. Ah. See? Yeah, yeah. There we go. I want to move towards this hitch with the sidewalls to flare up. So, yeah, yeah. Andrea, thank you for coming out. Um, I had a lot of fun making spoons. I hope you did too. And uh, I rather enjoyed this team up. It was a good yeah. time. I think we should. Uh, do it more often. Anyway, let's eat. <laughs> you want to have 2% on the quench. Um, <laughs> this is the real science. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is how you make a cereal spoon only at first build. You're doing great, by the yeah, way. Yeah, you're doing great. Okay. <laughs>